Pour one out for the newest member of Under 19. Dear Anemone is dead. Serialized for only 17 chapters, Rin Matsui's survival dark fantasy battle shonen mess of a manga attempted to do something that very few weekly jump manga can do successfully. Be original. Axiomatic that this series was on its way to a quick cancel, by chapter 6, the entire tone had shifted so sharply. I was fully expecting this to be a Hell's Paradise clone, which it was originally, but the quick switch to focusing on action is what killed Dear Anemone. There's a terminally online belief that good art can make up for poor storytelling. Anemone should be a perfect example as to why that's absolute horseshit. Let's all collectively minimize women for a bit. It doesn't matter how pretty a chick is, how cute her laugh is, how sick her fits are, she has to have a personality. There's gotta be some attraction there on an emotional and intellectual level. Popular battle manga, for all the flaws that they might have, will equip their characters or plot with some sort of density that can resonate with a large amount of viewers quickly. Demon Slayer, Jujutsu Kaisen, and Kagurabachi are recent battle series that have questionable art at times, but execute on themes or approach tropes in unexpected, unique ways. I just finished Blood Meridian, so I'm in a brutal mood. Let's peel back the Anemone a bit, shall we? The power system is literally non-existent. You would think biological creatures fusing with humans, augmenting their strength, or even bringing them back from the dead would be something that a mangaka could build upon and center the story around. Instead, it quickly dissolves into a who can punch the other person harder? Who can throw the other person further? How many walls can I crash through before I get knocked out? Typical shonen bullshit that doesn't really lend itself well to the survival horror aspects of this series. And even when there was a brief explanation onto how these powers are merging with the humans, all of it was thrown away for fucking bunnies. The character design had its moments, yes, but for an island of critters, it really is critterless. Rabbits are one of the least threatening animals out there. So why were they chosen to be an end boss? Why did Matsui go in that direction? Like, what the fuck was that, dude? Come on. And yeah, look, I, I, I think Matsui is a great artist. I like their androgynous take on things, but they need to have some form of variance with their characters. Hokuzono, the mangaka of Kagurabachi, I was extremely critical about how dog shit their faces were and their expressions, but Hokuzono was able to turn it around pretty quickly. We're less than 40 chapters into Kagurabachi, and the lack of expression that was originally in the first 10, 15, 20 chapters is now super expressive. Characters squint, they wince, they react differently to certain things that their op is saying. Dear Anemone never had that. Pretty aesthetic, yes, but I can't tell who's a guy or a girl. I can't tell when someone is feeling any sort of emotion aside from surprise, pain, anger, or happiness. Like, there's no complexity to these characters. They're all built the same way. They dress relatively the same. Their hairstyles are the same. Their frames are the same. It's so fucking dumb. There's no variance to the creatures either. If you're going to be taking liberties with what animals are on Darwin's Island, the Galapagos or whatever, then you can have lions, you can have hippos, elephants, so different birds. You can even go into like Fuse Botany, for example, which was one of the highlights of Hell's Paradise. I think Matsui was way in over their head. And when their lack of skill finally caught up to them, they crashed real fucking hard. The mangaka wiped their entire social media of any mention of Dear Anemone around chapter 11. That's fucked up. Matsui lost my respect with that move. Absolutely no fucking integrity. Why would you discredit yourself like that? Who cares if your series got cancelled? A manga series is essentially your offspring and not all of your kids are going to be geniuses or fucking all-stars. But that doesn't mean you just toss them away when they don't turn out to be what you expected. You go on their IG, you go on their Twitter, you don't see a single tweet or post about Dear Anemone. The fuck is wrong with you?
YouTubers like me in the West, critics overseas in the East, consumers who are purchasing Dear Anemone, or reading it on the Manga Plus app, they all had the same sentiments. But who the fuck cares? Be proud of what you made. Not everyone's work is going to be sensational, but there were some good qualities to Dear Anemone that I'm sure a lot of people would have liked to have seen. And in the future, I think Matsui will be a better mangaka, maybe on a completely different style of series, but for them to eradicate this part of their history, that doesn't sit well with me at all. I want to close off this video talking about how fans respond to cancelled mangaka. Look, nothing about my concerns with how they churn through young artists will change. And quite frankly, fans don't really care. They pretend to care. And they'll make cringy statements online like, I hope the mangaka gets another chance. No, no, no. Fuck that pansy shit. Matsui does not deserve another chance in Weekly Shonen Jump at all. This wasn't a manga that was running for some time and lost its footing after establishing goodwill within the community, like High School Family for example. This was a dog shit manga written by an author who wasn't ready for the big leagues. And that's okay. Matsui, like I said, will get better. They can learn how to write to a built-in audience and determine when to root their story in fantasy or realistic elements. They can learn to balance shonen tropes, originality, and integrity, and things like that tend to come over time. When you stumble early on in your career and maybe when you pivot into a different focus within the same field. But for fans to pat the mangaka on their back and try and pick them up when the creator stumbled really hard because of their own shortcomings, that's just weird behavior, man. We're definitely in a time where people feel so soft and sensitive towards critiquing any of their media. There is absolutely nothing wrong with having high standards towards a manga series that is being run in the number one magazine in the world. And there's nothing wrong with calling out a creator who drops the ball so badly in that magazine. But you know, I really think these dudes with Cancel Jump series need to come together and develop a partnership or something. Think uh, Clamp? Uh, Takeshi Obata, Aka Akasaka, for example. These are creatives who are able to juggle a bunch of works at the same time or banger after banger sequentially because they relinquish some of the creative aspects of manga to someone that is better fitted for that particular role. And I feel a lot of these younger mangaka, they have incredible skills and they definitely could be successful in Jump, but maybe they're better as just an artist or a writer or even working in a group that has three, four, five members and they can work out who is going to pencil what, who's going to do backgrounds, who's going to work out the storyboard of a series. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you don't have all of the qualities of other mangaka. Not everyone wants to be Oda, nor should everyone try to be like Kishimoto. <sighs> don't bother with Dear Anemone. The series doesn't even have a proper ending. It just stops. Very few weekly mangaka have told compelling stories in less than 20 chapters. Rin Matsui was doomed from the start. Two out of ten.